So remember that when we talk about acetylcholine as a neurotransmitter, remember the neurons that release acetylcholine are called cholinergic, and their receptor targets um, include both ionotropic receptors. These are the nicotinic uh, cholinergic receptors, you know, which um, nicotine will act as an agonist at, uh, and also the muscarinic um, cholinergic receptors, which are metabotropic, um, and a chemical called muscarin will act as an agonist there. But nicotine acts at nicotinic cholinergic receptors, NACHRs, right? And they are found, you know, rather extensively in the peripheral nervous system. Remember Otto Lowy, uh, you know, the vagus stuff, the stuff that came out of the vagus nerve, which is a major parasympathetic nerve that, you know, serves the upper viscera. Um, you know, the vagus stuff that he identified that slowed the heart, the frog heart when dripped upon it, um, is actually acetylcholine. Um, so it's, but it's complicated. So, you know, while um, nicotinic cholinergic receptors we're going to see are, are found in the parasympathetic division of the autonomic nervous system, um, you know, on the target organs, um, they are also found in the ganglia for both the parasympathetic and sympathetic divisions of the autonomic nervous system. So remember that these ANS projections, right, uh, the sympathetic, you know, starts in the, the, the spinal cord. Those are the primary neurons which go out to the sympathetic chain ganglia. And then there's a synapse there. And then you got the longer axons of the postganglionic cells that go, for example, to the heart, to speed up heart rate and they release norepinephrine there. But in the ganglia, you know, from those, you know, spinal, you know, um, sympathetic uh, preganglionic cells, you know, to the, the release of neurotransmitter there is cholinergic. Um, and so, uh, and it's also true for the parasympathetic system, um, you know, from the brain stem and from the sacral spinal cord, you know, out to the ganglia around the heart, for example, where then you'll have short axons to release the acetylcholine, like onto the heart, you know, at slow heart rate, for example, as part of the parasympathetic, you know, response. Um, the ganglionic, you know, uh, cells there, they, the, the synapse is cholinergic. So nicotine can act uh, and have, you know, rather complex effects on uh, autonomic output by influencing, you know, synapses that are components of both the parasympathetic and the sympathetic nervous system. And, you know, initially many people's response to nicotine uh, is, you know, um, rapid heart rate, tachycardia, which definitely indicates a predominance of, you know, sort of sympathetic uh, activation. Uh, however, with tolerance, you know, with the development of tolerance, uh, many smokers, you know, will tell you that, you know, smoking a cigarette actually reduces heart rate. It actually helps to relieve and calm, you know, their response. Um, nicotine, uh, nicotinic cholinergic receptors are found in the, the parasympathetic and sympathetic divisions of the autonomic nervous system there, and they can mediate nicotine's, you know, multiple, you know, and changing as people continue to use the drugs um, or the drug, uh, you know, autonomic responses. It also acts at the periphery at the neuromuscular junction, right? This is the, the, the synapse between the motor neurons, you know, that are coming out of the brainstem and spinal cord and the muscle cells themselves, which will express nicotinic cholinergic receptors, which will bind the release acetylcholine and, you know, provoke, you know, depolarization and contraction. Um, so what's interesting about that is that that's what often mediates the, um, you know, the toxic effect of, uh, you know, excessive uh, nicotine or excessive stimulation. We talked about, you know, for example, pesticides and also uh, nerve gases. Um, you know, they overstimulate, in many cases, uh, the uh, nicotinic cholinergic receptor, which has this, uh, you know, response of desensitizing, you know, after over overstimulation. It'll, it'll switch into another form where it will not respond to the nicotine anymore, uh, you know, or any other pesticide, um, and it will not respond uh, to the actual release of acetylcholine at the neuromuscular junction, which is very dangerous, right, because that means that um, the... Um, you know, if you try to move, you you won't get any muscular response, and that that's true also of the diaphragm, right? So you'll have, you know, difficulty breathing, um, and this can result in you know too much nicotine can result in asphyxiation. Now, while nicotine, you know, acts at receptors, nicotinic cholinergic receptors that are localized in the 
you know, autonomic nervous system, both sympathetic and parasympathetic, and can have complicated sorts of effects on autonomic output. It's also localized in the peripheral nervous system at the neuromuscular junction, right? Um, it also has pretty significant distribution or action, you know, at receptors that are significantly distributed around uh, the central nervous system. So uh, nicotinic cholinergic receptors um, are found, you know, pretty widely in the brain. There are a number, as we talked about, right, um, uh, nuclei that are located on the frontal lobe in an area called the basal forebrain, you know, that, re that send their projections around the cortex and release acetylcholine, you know, in these areas. And their you know, activity is associated with, you know, memory and other aspects of cognition, right? So nicotine is going to certainly influence, you know, uh, the distribution of receptors we're going to see, um, you know, with chronic nicotine exposure in these regions. It also, uh, these receptors are expressed, um, you know, in thalamus, right? Because there's a, a brainstem nucleus that is the source of cholinergic, you know, projections and release in the thalamus. And uh, this is, you know, uh, it's called the PPT, right? in the brainstem and it releases acetylcholine in the thalamus. So there are nicotinic cholinergic receptors that are localized there as well. And actually that's kind of interesting because um, remember that particular projection, uh, the cholinergic projection from the brainstem into the thalamus, you know, it remember these are, that's part of the modulatory, you know, reticular activating system in the brainstem that includes the VTA and the substantia nigra for dopamine release around the central nervous system, and it includes the rafe nuclei, which, you know, project forward and release serotonin, and it includes, you know, the locus ruleus, which, you know, widely projects and releases norepinephrine. Remember, the, all of these, you know, kind of classical neurotransmitters that we discussed are sort of modulatory neurotransmitters. They modulate or alter, you know, the state of alertness or arousal. Well, you know, as you get sleepier, you know, the dopaminergic and the serotonergic and the noradrenergic and the cholinergic systems decline in activity and you get drowsier and drowsier. Then when you get into that slow wave sleep, you actually get, um, you know, basically they're effectively kind of, you know, shut down and not really, you know, firing very much at all. However, when you shift into certain forms of sleep, you know, REM sleep, for example, which are which is also often associated with you know, sort of vivid dreaming, there is sort of selective reactivation of that cholinergic pathway from the PPT to the thalamus. And that's interesting because, you know, chronic nicotine exposure will alter, you know, the distribution of those receptors. It often results in upregulation, you know, the number of these nicotinic receptors. And people often report that during, uh, you know, cigarette eff efforts to, to, to withdraw from cigarettes, you know, to quit cigarettes, that the, the, the vividness of their dreams, the intensity of their dreams, you know, is impacted and affected. So aspects of sleep or particularly dreaming sleep is, can be significantly impacted by, you know, withdrawal, you know, after...